Hello. So, uh, what do we have here? Well, we have The Lost Battalion. It's a magazine game from uh, Strategy and Tactics number 217. You can already see that it's on glossy paper. I, I don't have the magazine, I just got the uh, the game. It's, um, uh, let's see, it's 10 pages of rules. You know, that's including just the game components and stuff like that. And there's actually two, uh, one and a half pages of um, solitaire game rules, which I'm not actually going to use. I'd like to use it in another game, but I'm going to play, try just the standard game, a uh, two-player game. And uh, then there's there's a page for like setup. It says setup and scenarios, but essentially the scenarios are historical setup or um, free setup, in which case you have um, like a, a setup line here and it's the essentially it's the Americans versus the Germans World War One. Uh, uh, the the Muse are or Muse in the Muse are gone offensive nineteen eighteen. Um, so the Americans would set up behind here. They have some a few French troops and tanks, and then the Germans set up anywhere on their side of the setup. And then there's the um, solitaire game whereby the Germans are not set up, and. Um, Uh, that they sort of come on according to the solitaire game rules. And then there's uh, about almost a page of design notes. Um, so I think I, I haven't um, recorded anything for a while. I haven't played any games for a while. Um, well, um, my mother was here for a week, so this, this room then becomes like the guest bedroom. And um, it was uh, after... Um, uh, Killer Angels. I needed something sort of a bit lighter. I was searching around things to do. One thing I, I did do is I've been playing some some minis games. You can see I've got a bit of very primitive my terrain set up here, and uh, I play with um, either cardboard flats or um, cardboard cutouts. I don't actually have any minis of my own, and uh, every now and then I, I I take a fancy to trying out some minis rule sets. And essentially, what I tried out was uh, there's um, the sort of flavour it seems to be today in Mini's rule sets is very similar to the wargaming war game rule sets is that people are more into sort of lighter and simpler and um, so I tried out a couple of those two skirmish types one chain reaction uh, Napoleonics and the other um, two fat lardies sharp practice and they were both a bit meh to me, a bit disappointing. So I sort of got that out of my system. I might try some De Bellis Antiquitas in a bit, but I, I was looking for something interesting to get into and maybe inspired by um, uh, Callendale's coverage of the uh, Cambrai battle. Um, I got out the Lost Battalion now. It's, it's in my stack of games to play and I, I almost pulled it out before doing the, um, uh, the uh, miniatures rule sets and I put it away because I played it once before a long time ago and I don't actually remember how it played but I remember that I liked it and then I checked on Board Game Geek and I'd actually rated it I think a 5 which is a very low rating for me. Um, often I, I sort of rate games, you know I enjoy the games, I get games and I generally enjoy them or I, I think they're they're really sort of, there's something terrible about them, then it'd be very low rating. But five, a sort of middle rating like that, is quite rare for me. And, and I'm wondering, I can't remember why I rated it so lowly, and yet my memory of it is that, uh, sort of, uh, of great interest in the game. And now part of it might be that my memory is lingering, f lingering from when I first got the game, and I thought, wow, this looks fantastic. It's um, First World War, but it's not strategic. It's um, essentially operational. You have um, divisions uh, on each side, but they're broken down to regiments. So, for example, the Americans have essentially four regiments for every division, and the Germans have, it depends, it varies, sort of two to four. Um, 
So it's quite sort of, you know, the detail's quite in there. It's a battle rather than the whole thing. I thought it's very interesting. You've, I'll show you the, the map here. So, um, just, there you go. So what you've got, you've got obviously uh, trench lines here. You've got forest. This is the Argonne forest down in the, the, the corner here. So this is, um, the map is set up like this. This direction's actually south. So the Americans, these sort of olive coloured units are um, advancing from the south. Um, so that way's the, the east. You have the Argonne at the Meuse River here. So that essentially cuts across the whole map. So you can see that the river's across here. And it sort of goes to there. Um, and the front line is all along here. I've actually started the first turn, so we've got a breakthrough here. Um, and what you have is, so, okay, there's forest, no, there's woods, um, there's hills, um, there's towns. And then you get these, which you might be able to notice is a slightly more sort of regular um, trench pattern. Those are actually field fortifications. And you go back here and you see there's a whole, these are all trench lines. There's trench lines, trench lines, they call them field fortifications. Sorry, this is actually this and then this one are what they call permanent fortifications. So there's a line all the way along here. It's hard to see from a distance, but it's quite discernible um, up close. And that is what you call the Hindenburg line. So that is extra, um, goes along here. And that is um, really what the uh, Germans are trying to break, break through. So that's a stronger fortification, a permanent fortification. And it's got, you know, these outlying um, field fortifications reaching up to it and then further ones in depth back and then there's a break and you get all this expanse without any trenches um, up to the Meuse and then behind that you have um, hasty fortifications so not quite as well defensive they run all the way along and then taper off and stop here um, so uh, and over here is Sedan now essentially the German uh, the sorry the American is trying to reach um, they need, for a decent uh, victory, they need four starred hexes. They have black stars. I've highlighted them with these green cubes. And then there's also three in Sedan. I didn't have enough green cubes, but fortunately enough for all the others. But Sedan's quite visible. You get three stars there. Everywhere else you get one star. So if you get four or more, you get a decent um, American victory. Uh, I think two to three is just tactical victory they call it slight victory and any less that's nothing um so the germans are on the uh, sorry the americans are on the attack um yeah sorry no two or less it's a german victory three victory points so three of those hexes u.s tactical four to seven operational eight plus u.s strategic victory And it's slightly harder if you do the free setup, so you have to get more of those things, um, those starred hexes. So you have some decisions right from the start, because what you'll find is the American line's heavy back this way to the west, and then it's, it's just sort of uh, the flank is held by the, some fairly weak French units. The um, Germans are uh, defending all the way along the line. These are Austrian units, just a few of those. And so, so that is a solid line. And then this, strangely enough, was, wasn't a solid line. I mean, it was kind of as solid as they can get. But the setups is, is essentially, and it's very well marked. You get um, on the map, it's fat. Here, I'll show you one where they didn't. You, you have um, the division, and then either it's within one hex or it has a little number next to it, like, let me show you one where they to it like here so it's all within three hexes of that so the setup is greatly facilitated in that respect um so 
you have some choice of where you put your units. They don't have to be, you know, not just line, line, line. I could have put some of these a bit further back. Some had to be more or less where they are. These are um, reinforcements, turn one reinforcements that are coming on for the German. They had to take the second turn, essentially. Um, and, yeah, so you have to make some decisions. There's, you, there's one, two, three, four, five, six... There's sort of, on that sector, there's six victory points. So if you decide to attack into there, that will gain you a decent victory. Or you're deciding to attack here to Sedan. I guess that was the historical objective. And um, so there's only sort of one um, victory point. Sorry, two on this side of the Meuse. Otherwise, you're going to have to... Oh, three, there's one there. Otherwise, you're going to have to go over. So if you don't get across the Meuse and you stay within its boundaries, you could win a slight tactical victory. But if you actually cross the Meuse or, or go over this, or... Yeah, I mean, it could bring units um, through here on the first turn, potentially. Uh, the Germans might kind of close the door there over on the other side of the Meuse River. That's a chance for them to counter-attack. Um, and so you might go into there. So you have to make some decisions from the start. Um, now, uh, just while we're talking about sort of background, um, the first thing that I noticed of the game, apart from the fact that the map is very nice, it's by Joe Yaust. Um... And it's, you've got boxes off, so you have a reserve boxes. Now, these are important because um, I've, I've set up. So these are all the reinforcements. This is the turn track. You have uh, 18 turns. Essentially, each turn is a day except for the first, I think, two turns, which... No, each turn is two days except for the first two turns, which are one day each because they're, you know, sort of greater momentum of the offensives at the beginning of it. Um so you can bring reserves straight on your side of the map and with the germans there they're they're marked um east north or west and the americans and some french they always come on from that side um or you can put if you're american put some units in reserve um and then bring them on later the uh, oh, uh, or you can take units, and it has to be whole division. So if anyone, at, at this point I should mention that the, all the American units have four steps. So these are the two-step markers, um, and these are the four- and three-step markers when they're sort of fresh on the board. Obviously you flip them. Um, if... if a, a regiment loses all four steps, then um, you will not be able to take that division off into reserve. And what you get is replacements and you can bring it up to strength. And there's also a special rule whereby um, <clears throat> in the first turn, the Americans get what's called hasty attacks, which is <clears throat> essentially like a normal attack, but it can't be combined soon you can't have sort of two or three hexes versus one hex attacking so it's hex by hex but you can have two units stacked so two regiments against one um, German regiment because that they the Germans start out essentially unstacked um, although actually I could have stacked them but uh, didn't seem to make sense but anyway the point is is that with a hasty attacks it's during movement so you pay double movement point cost to try a hasty attack and you can repeat it as many times as you like to try and gain that bait breakthrough and then even at, then all movements done and then there's a combat phase now so that happens on the first turn and then there's one turn later in the game which you are able to do that and you can do that with units that have been in the, the reserve and then they've um gone through I think three days or three turns and they've been awarded an assault marker so they are then allowed to do that hasty attack so it represents the last and final push the final assault so you have to make some decisions about withdrawing to reserves replacements and then preparing for that final assault so you get that handy box um, then you get some the Germans have machine gun units they're essentially like assets 
that come on every turn so even though they could all get destroyed they might all come back you roll for the number you actually get and you just sort of place them where you want at the beginning of the turn so although the germs get second turn you place reinforcements and the replacements and these units at the beginning so in preparation for the american attacks so they're kind of handy sort of buttresses and maybe um minus speed bumps they're they only have strength two but movement of ten um the normal german units let's have a quick look you have attack strength defense strength and then movement the americans only have one combat strength so they stretch to defend the same on um defense but you can see the germans they can be very weak on attack, very strong on defence. It just depends. And there's quite a lot of variability. It depends on the divisions. Um, so, you know, like you'll get one division that will all be three, six, tens, and another one will all be three, seven, tens, like that. Um, but the point being, so um, they're quite strong on defence. You can see against. 13 against 6, that's 2 to 1. You have the combat odds table, 2 to 1. But as soon as you get some terrain into play, like you could have um, natural terrain, you know, like if it's a woods, fort, um, forest, a hill, or a city, etc., you will get a shift, 1 or 2. And then <clears throat> you can also have the uh, man-made um, terrain, which is the um, trenches and Hindenburg line and so that you could end up with two three maybe four shifts so at two to one and if you get uh, down to less than one to three it's automatic um, attack it destroyed so you wouldn't do it um, <clears throat> and the results are step losses so you know attack a step loss defend a step loss attack a step loss defend a step loss it's one d6 there's no modifiers on the d6 it's just shift so it's very quick and easy combat table. Um, uh, one finesse point is that certain times tanks have to be lost on a T. So at the extreme ends. So tanks have two stats. And really you, tanks are just used to absorb step losses. Otherwise you're having to take step losses from your whole divisions. Um, you can see this one's already been marked down to its last step, which is quite risky. Um, that that's what happened then you also have artillery artillery can either fire or move um, not both and they defend on a one strength so um, if the Germans so I haven't finished moving these but uh, for example here there's no zones of control so if the Germans so wished he could move here and attack that and when you're in an enemy entrenchment is fine it works for you just as well however there's for example um hasty fortifications give it a two left shift for the german but only one left shift for the u.s so the germans are using them kind of better so it does depend who's using it um, but both sides can use whichever fortification is in the hex so you see uh, um I've kind of left that as bait because it's not hugely strong. I might regret that later on <laughs> if that gets destroyed. But um, I want to get through the line, so I'm hoping the German will take that bait and then, you know, enable me to move through the line quicker. Because here, through this forest, I didn't make any hasty attacks, um, uh, partly because I wasn't sort of concentrated enough, but also because these units are strong defence, and that forest is going to be a hell. To, to break through it's going to cost a lot of steps and um the americans have 50 replacements over the whole game at the germans only 11 <coughs> but um you know you have to you have to be careful how you spend your men <coughs> so um where was that yes yeah, so that's a german machine gun units germans also get these um deliberate attacks chits there's only three he gets between three and six for the whole game again it's random and i wouldn't as as the american player i wouldn't know how many the german had and so that automatically gives as long as you have one unit or something you automatically get an eight to one odds attack uh, simulating you know the german um effectiveness at, at sort of bringing things together and throwing it in um 
very well coordinated counter attacks. And the Germans don't have um, artillery units they have to move about, they just have barrage ships, so they just throw them down where they need. And um, they get three available each turn from the second turn onwards, obviously, as they muster their um, artillery to, to meet this counter attack. These are the losses we've already had. So the Germans have lost six steps and the Americans, and that was just in, in that breakthrough there. The Americans have lost two steps of tanks. I don't know if those tanks are coming back. I, I can't remember. Yes, oh, so this is the replacement box markers. Okay, so I haven't marked that yet. Okay, uh, combat results table, barrage table. So you barrage number of factors firing. Um, if it's a hasty assault, only one artillery unit, otherwise on a normal assault, you can have up to three artillery units joining in a barrage. And that would be the number of step losses you get. And you have the train effects. And then you have here the German tactical action table. That is for the solitaire game. So you can see already, because the Germans, they have, you know, kind of some more abstractions, chips they can throw in every turn and that. Because they are on the defensive, they're having to present a certain line because um, if they don't present some kind of line and it's going to, a lot of it's going to be dictated on the roadways. Although that's one thing which struck me as a bit strange is that I read in the designer's notes and it's quite nice within the rules you get um, design notes interspersed with the rules. So example for the German deliberate attacks rule, those um, markers I mentioned you get the design note for it. So you get the why and the where for. And it, it, I think in one of those it said, <clears throat> you know, the place for four years, this had been um, a battleground. It was well mashed up and the roads were useless. And yet they are marked and you can get strategic movement um, where you have, it costs half to move. Otherwise they're one and, you know, one through the terrain. So there might... Um, I put some defenders on as near as I could parts of the road net. Um, we're better marked here, so to try and slow down in the advance. But uh, now the Germans do have lots of reinforcements coming, but you can see um, we're going to have to block that without any zones of control. It's going to be a hard job to block that line. I mean, that would be a nice elbow of the Meuse to form. A, um, a solid Hindenburg line defence there. Uh, we shall see, we shall see. Um, so anyway, what I was sort of saying is because of the, the sort of fallback and limited ability to counter-attack and sort of create thrust and lots of manoeuvre, that I think that the, the solitaire game could handle that the German player quite well, and I think that might actually work out as a good... That's just my thoughts, just understanding what the game's about um so that would control that within the german player within the solitaire game. excuse me so um yeah that's so, sort of talking about components there's it is a magazine game <coughs> and it is decision games there's a lot of errata so for example they forgot to put you can pick it up from re reading between the lines and the rules but they didn't put north south on here then um, <clears throat> there's that thing I had to mark. Then I understand there's a couple of pages of Rata, and I don't have it. If anyone has it, please post it on Board Game Geek or on Web Grognars or, or even on Consum World. I should check there, but um, the Web Grognars link for it is is <clears throat> um, dead now. So um, we need it, us players of the Lost Battalion. So um, the last thing I think to say about um, the components is that it's a bit of a bummer to set up because although I did have an enjoyable evening and it took me, I did actually start playing. Um, you can see, but I, I, I had a late night last night, took a late night, and I did get into it. But some people, if you're impatient and you have an opponent and you want to get into this, don't because, um, these you know, there's no color coding. So, what I have here, each line is a division and. Um, the only thing to tell you what's what is the tiny little number in the corner. I actually had to use 
um, my son's magnifying glass to help me. Okay, I was working poor lighting. I don't have great lighting in here at night time, especially um, within the daytime. It, I think, I, yeah, I would be okay with my glass, just my glasses. But you know, you you have to check the division seventy seven, seventy seven, seventy seven. Um, if you have one of these, you could pack it in. Um, you're going to need two essentially because there's so many divisions, or else you're going to have to combine divisions in one compartment so forth or I think what I'm going to do when I bag it up is I'm going to use you know like 50 baggies one for each division or something like that or for every two divisions and it's the same on the German side as well um I enjoy it because I, I it's like clipping counters I got into it I was listening to um, videos whilst whilst sorting it out but it did take a long time <clears throat> if you're playing it face to face set it up before your opponent gets here or us you know be ready to sort of spend time searching um so yeah that's the setup although having said that once you had set them up like i said the um, on the map it's very helpful it's all marked um and the other thing to mention about the rata um there was one or two units that didn't have all their steps like there's one on the four and three step, but they didn't have a two and one step. I think there was one of those. And then two that didn't have a three and four step. So my question is, is that a mistake or is it intentional? I don't know without the errata. But there's a, so far that's really all that has been erratorous. I've read through the rules. It all makes sense. I haven't played them yet, so not all. So we, we shall see. I mean, I, I write rules notes here. This isn't errata. This is just me. Um fleshing out the rules a bit to help me remember stuff um so yeah so uh the germans also get two gas counters they can place them anywhere at the beginning of the turn before the americans the americans essentially will lose automatically lose one step and no one can move into that um you can move out of it but not into it so you can you know you can block that would be greatly helpful when people are trying to cross the news and so forth um as one things some things they could have done is they could have some special things so for example turn two plus the american can start using those reserve units turn five plus the american can start using operational that's the road movement bonus um stacking i always take that i often draw it on the map that well, there wasn't space here because i always need that because you know it changes so much between games it's nigh on impossible for me to remember on a, a game from you know half hour to half hour what the stacking rules are so i always need to draw that out and it's essentially artillery has to be in a hex on its own so you can see that as um awkward when they're behind your front line and your front line has no zone of controls um and american units can have two regiments of the same division or one of any division i didn't write that quite very well but essentially you, the americans can only stack two regiments if they are of the same division and then you can always add a tank on top of that the germans can have any three units there so it doesn't matter which division they're from in one hex so you can see they can they can pop three of those together and get a massive 21 strength point defense and then you know in a fortification at the least they're going to get two less if they're the germans defending Although interesting point here is the hasty fortifications, you get a two left shift, which is good. Field fortifications, you only get a one left shift, which is interesting. Um, and no protection versus artillery. So my question there is maybe that text should have been here. Again, Aratovich. Um, I'm going to go with it as written. Um unless someone's alive to um, my postings on this on board game geek i think i'll check console world as well to see if i can get any advice from someone in the know on that because that could be quite important you can see um although one thing that made me think was that the hasty fortification the only place you have it is on this side of the news so perhaps although it was hasty it was actually quite solid and also because you have to be crossing the river as well it, 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 that all adds that's all factored into to that although we do have 
combat effects on the river. So I, I don't know, that's a question. Um, so what else to say? Um, set up. Don't know, oh, I'm not at the beginning. I think that's it, isn't it? Let me just pause here a minute. So yeah, the, just real quick start of observations would be if you have the free setup, obviously the Americans could say set up here. They're already over the Muse um, and they, they have this kind of open area for victory points. Um, that's why the victory conditions are stiffer on the free setup. So actually you have a nice choice that I think it's nice you would, you know, you can play it once historically and then try your own um, I don't know what this operation was called in the sense of Cambrai or so forth, but Moose Argonne Offensive. I guess that's the name for it. Okay, and actually, so the first two turns that represent two days of real time, and the next turns all represent three days. We have 18 turns. So, and each hex is a mile across. So. Um, that's quite interesting. So, effectively, a, a German regiment could travel 10 miles in three days on this battleground without any fighting or, or 20 miles on road, on the, in the road network, um, without encountering any enemies. So that would be sort of from the front line to here. That would be to um, two thirds of the way to Sudan. Okay, so I think what, what I'm going to do then is um, maybe I should s stop this now. And yeah, I think it's just over half an hour. And then I'll, I'll do another video of maybe half hour or so. I don't know. I'll run through a turn. Um, so you can see how it's played.